All right, guys, how's it going? So yesterday we talked about creating and fixing separation anxiety, especially how we prepare puppies not to struggle with that, right? So many of you asked me, what do I like to start teaching my puppies? That's a really good question. The good thing is I have videos, a ton of videos with some of my dogs when they were puppies, Dante, Mango, Luca, a lot of stuff out there. So a lot of people don't understand that training starts the day you take that puppy home. No matter what age the puppy is, training starts the day you take the puppy home. Now, the easy thing about it, the wonderful thing about training a puppy is they're sponges. They learn very fast and they live through their belly. So food is vital and they'll do anything to eat, right? So we take advantage of that. But the other thing that is overlooked is you have to remember you just remove that puppy away from their siblings and their mom and everything they know. So now you become that everything, all right? So a few of the things that I like to teach. The one thing I like to teach is I start working on a marker word immediately, right? I'm doing a lot of hand feeding when they're puppies. I do feed out of a bowl. I don't feed them all their meals by hand training and working for it. I do feed them from their bowls twice a day. But I also take a lot of that food throughout the day and I do a lot of just engagement and working and training and teaching that marker word by hand with the food. What do I mean by that? I use yes as a marker. You can use a clicker, use whatever you want, you know, but let's say I have their bowl of food and they're getting ready to eat. I may take a handful of that food and just sit there and when the puppy's looking at me, say yes and then feed. Yes, and then feed. Now remember, not at the same time, not yes, and then as the same time you're feeding. You want the dog to really start to understand. You want the puppy to understand. When that dog hears yes, when that puppy hears yes, or the click, that means good things are about to happen. And it becomes very powerful with the puppy, right? I'd have a video of Dante, I think he was 10 weeks old or 12 weeks old, and you see him running down my driveway away from me, full speed. All I did was said yes, and he hits the brakes and comes flying back. Why is that? Because that yes becomes completely reflexive. It becomes a reflex. The dog can't even help it because we've ingrained it to him that when he hears it, it's automatic. It's that powerful, and you have to have that. You want to have that. So it's yes, feed, yes, feed, yes, feed. Five, six, ten times with each meal. Very quickly, they learn what that is, right? Very, very important. Now, again, huge mistake that I think people make when you have a puppy. They take the puppy outside and they put the puppy on a leash. My puppies don't see a leash for a while. They're never on leash, okay? Again, that puppy is attached to you. It needs you. So I take advantage of that. Use common sense here. Of course, you have to make sure you're in a place where the puppy's safe. You can't do this in, if you're in the middle of downtown Nashville or Manhattan on a busy street, okay? Use your head, use common sense. So my puppies don't see a leash. We're outside, we're doing things. I let the puppy run around, just be a dog, be a puppy, have a good time. If that puppy starts coming my way, I'm going to mark it. Now, when the dog starts to understand that mark, that yes, that builds speed coming to me. So he may be coming to me very nonchalant or half speed. Now he knows yes. I say yes, and I'm moving away from the puppy. I'm running away from the puppy. Ooh, that builds crazy speed with the recall. That's why my dogs recall the way they do, right? They, they learn that as puppies. Let's say your puppy's away from you, and he's kind of far, and you want to start working on it, and he's not looking at you, right? I yell the puppy's name, Dante, come, and he turns around and I start taking off the other way. Well, guess what that's going to do? Automatically, it's going to trigger that prey drive and that social drive, that pack drive. He wants to be with me. He doesn't want to leave with me. He's going to come running so fast, right? And I'm going to stop and I'm going to keep cheering him along. And I'm going to mark it with that yes along the way. And then I'm going to feed him not just one piece of food, and I'm not going to just keep going, yes, 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 feed. I'm going to mark it with the, and then I'm going to just feed a bunch, and we're going to celebrate. And very quickly, that recall becomes automatic. It doesn't matter what's around. By the time that dog is three, four, five months old, that recall is going to look absolutely phenomenal. Take advantage of that dog needing you, right? Socially, he needs you, and he needs to eat. 
He loves food. They live through their belly. So puppy training, super easy, right? The other thing is I need my puppy to love their kennel and I need to teach him to go in there on their own. Very, very simple, okay? And it's done through repetitions, one repetition at a time. That's all I do. So every time I need the puppy to go in that crate, all I'm doing is walking him over there and I'm gonna use food again. And I'm gonna say, Dante kennel, and then I'm gonna lure him and throw the food. But remember the timing, Dante kennel, and then I'm gonna lure him and throw the food in. And then he goes in and he learns every time he goes in there, he gets something good. He gets to eat. Within a couple of days, they enjoy going in there. They don't fight you on it. They learn it and they learn the command literally with one repetition at a time. I don't do it more than that. But when I have a puppy, I take them in and out a lot because I'm obsessive. I have OCD when it comes to the potty training. I don't want accidents. I don't want accidents in the crate. I don't want accidents in the house. So I get them on a very strict schedule. And at eight weeks old, every two hours we're going out. But I'm going to take advantage of that time to teach all the little things I need, okay? So I need to teach him how to go in his kennel. The other thing is I'm feeding in a bowl, right? Twice a day. I don't really feed three times a day like a lot of people do in their puppies. I get them on the schedule they're gonna be on right away. So I'm gonna take their bowl of food. I'm gonna have someone hold the puppy or I'm gonna hold the puppy. I'm gonna put the food in the crate and then I'm gonna shut the door to the crate and I'm gonna put the puppy down. And he's going to want in there right? We're using reverse psychology here. He's going to want in there and he's going to be crying and he's going to be pawing at it. He might bite the crate. He's going to be barking. I want that. I want to bring that out of the puppy. I want in there. I'm like, whoa, what do you want there, buddy? What do you want? And he looks at me and would say, you want in there? All right, we could do that. And I'm going to say kennel. And then I'm going to open the door and he's going to go in and eat right away. Now that thing that he can't have, he can't get in there becomes much more desirable. Okay, instead of forcing the puppy in there, shutting the door and listen to him scream, scream, we turn it around. And then the last thing I have to have the puppy know is an out command. Drop whatever is in your mouth. Very, very important. So I work with a lot of people with a lot of dogs that are full grown and will not out. Professional dog trainers have dogs that will not out. Police dogs, sport dogs, working dogs, you see it all that will not out. I never understand that. It's one of the first things I teach. Immediately I teach it, and when they're puppies, it's super easy. Again, they live through their bellies. So the puppy has a piece of tissue. I'm not gonna fight him. Hey, good job, buddy. Out, and then I present good the, the kibble, the food, something they love right in front of their nose. Whoo, they out it, they get fed. Again, through repetitions, right? I throw a little ball on a rope. You guys have seen this. I have videos doing this. The puppy's running back, whether it's Dante or Mango, they're running back, hey, good job. I take the ball, I say out, I put the food right by their nose, they drop the ball, they get fed. Now, does that kill drive? Does that make them not want the ball? Does that make them not want to bite for people of working dogs? Absolutely not, absolutely not. But those things become automatic very, very fast. Training puppies is so easy, but if you sit on your ass and do nothing, and wait for the puppy or the dog to start developing problems, it's much, much, sorry, a bug just landed on my hand. It is so much easier to train what you want than it is to fix what you don't want. Trust me. So you could put the time in to managing that puppy when they're young, and that's temporary, very short-lived, right? You manage their time and their freedom. Too much freedom for a puppy is one of the biggest mistakes everyone makes. They're going to get into trouble and make mistakes. And then there's a lot of conflict involved in the relationship. You're always yelling at the puppy. You're telling the puppy no. You're stopping them from doing this. You have to manage their freedom. Then as they start to learn and get a little more better and a little more better, a little better, and they start to understand what you want and you could tell them, hey, don't do that, buddy. Then you can start giving them a little more freedom right? So that constant management is temporary up front. You have two options. You could put the time in the first few months in the beginning, or you could put a lot more time in later on and managing the dog the rest of their life. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to screw yourself and you're going to actually stop that dog from having the freedom that they want later on, right? 
The first great piece of advice anyone, a, a professional dog trainer ever gave me was the first dog trainer I worked with 27 years ago, right? I still preach it and use it to this day and it's done wonders for me. My puppies, my dogs sleep in their crate at night in my room until they're one year old, no matter how well trained they are, doesn't matter. They sleep in their crate at night until they're one year old, no matter how well trained they are. They are not left loose in the house when we're not home until they're two years old. That's about the age they start maturing. And if you put in the work beforehand to develop that self-sufficient dog, that's where they could be trusted. So I have very high drive dogs, right? And people say, well, you can't do that with Malinois. People used to ask me about Luke all the time. He's as intense as a dog you'll ever find. They say, how do you live with a dog like that? Well, he, he doesn't act like that when we're inside the home. When he comes inside, he goes and he lays down, right? We can leave all our dogs in the house unattended and leave the house. And nothing's going to be touched when we get home. No one goes in the garbage. No one gets on the couch. No one does any of that. But we bust our ass those first two years. When you get a new puppy, you get a new dog, it's two years of training to make that dog where it should be. You have to put in the time, right? We got four dogs. Would I leave Dante out right now with the rest of the dogs? No. No, he's 18 months old and he can't handle it. He can't be trusted with the other three dogs loose in the house. He's going to be crated when we leave, 100%. So put in the work now, work on those things. Kennel, recall, out, drop what you have in your mouth, and build that marker word so it is so strong that when the puppy hears it, later on the dog, when they hear it, it's automatic. It's automatic. They can't even help it. They hear it. They're turning around and flying to you, okay? I hope this helps, folks. Peace.